Let's see what's going on in your reading. I'm going to start from the past. I don't know this month for some reason. The past seems very pivotal for what's going on in the present and what will be happening in the future. Now in the past, you received the Hangman and the Eight of Swords. They're both really restricting cards. The legend goes that the Hanged Man is the Norse god Odin, who hung for nine days upside down, staring into the well of herbs for the mystical wisdom of the runes, which means secret magic letters. He relinquished his freedom of the outside world for the stillness to acquire the runes' wisdom through a spiritual journey from death to the rebirth. And in the legend, they say he actually did die and come back to life. And here the lesson is to stop controlling the physical world. Look at things in a different light and relinquish the old ideas because the new ideas are avidly seeking their place. This is the lesson of allowing things to go with the flow without opposition. This is what the Tao religion believes is woo-wee, it's called non-doing. Here the hangman did a voluntary sacrifice for a spiritual awakening. And there usually is some type of sacrifice associated to the hangman. And it's time now to reflect before you make any rash decisions. This is the time to do some soul searching and personal reflection is very painful. But something threw you into this personal reflection because the clarification card is the Eight of Swords. Something externally or internally ensnared you into a labyrinth because you feel restricted. You've been incapacitated, restrained, trapped, and it feels like you can't escape it. In reality, you can escape it any minute, but you choose not to. It's time to break the chains of personal fears and misgivings that have rendered you helpless and hopeless. And you know you want to change because down on the right from the past cards, for the base of your spine for sourcing and urgings, you see the chariot and eight of wands. The chariot is about overcoming opposing forces. He's about discipline, strength of willpower, and going into a spiritual awakening. Having some self-control in order to acquire confidence and Facing your challenges head on. It's a movement card. It's a card about going forward. Finding your higher self. You no longer want to sit on the sidelines and just be a spectator because the Eight of Wands is the card of sudden change. And it's usually a positive sudden change. You know, when things weren't going right, and you were always looking around thinking, why me? All of a sudden, everything's happening just the way it should, and it feels very comfortable. And now you know you're in a transition, and you're changing. And the Eight of Wands can also be about bringing news and messages, so something that's probably going to be a cornerstone in your change and transition. You might have already heard it, or maybe it's coming. But I think you've already heard it because the card's up above for your sacrum and your pelvic for awakening and arousing. You receive the world card and the king of cups. Now the world card is the completion card. You're at the end of a cycle. Whatever it is that was holding you back with the hanged man and the eight of swords in the past, it's no longer part of the program. You've gone through the gauntlet of all of the major arcana cards and came to an end point. And you've earned and learned and you've acquired knowledge now so that you're capable of any challenges that are thrown in front of you. And that's where the chariot comes in too because it's time to overcome the opposing forces. And you did. 
now that you have the world card, you have the confidence. And the clarification card has given you that confidence too because you got the King of Cups. The presence of any king assists in acquiring your long-term goals. But here this king is taking turbulent waters and making it tranquil. He's balancing out your unconscious with your conscious. He's controlling your emotions. All of a sudden you have a deeper understanding of yourself. You've gotten to the point where you know thyself. And you're starting to treat yourself with respect and as well other people. You're going to find that there's going to be a dramatic change in how you handle your interpersonal interactions. The King of Cups has taught you to maintain your composure in the midst of a wild sea of difficult situations for you to find serenity. Now he might be molten lava on the inside of emotions, but he's stolid and able to handle his emotions on the outside and has self-control. Now the cards up above for your solar plexus receive the lovers and the three of wands. Here it is now that you can control your emotions. You're able to manifest some deeper emotional bonds and harmonious relationships. And the lover's card is about making decisions between vice and virtue. And this is where the chariot comes in as overcoming opposing forces. You have to make some good decisions. And whatever decisions you made, the clarification card is the three of wands. You're being acknowledged for some accomplishments. This is a card also that makes you feel that things are falling into place and making you feel good, just like the Eight of Wands down there for sudden change. This card is about expansion and movement, just like the Chariot is. But there's a few problems and storm clouds over the horizon because the center cards are the Page of Swords and the Knight of Pentacles. Now the Page of Swords is a very clever, charming, intelligent, but very immature person. Page brings ideas and a knight launches these into action. And once you get some experience, then the queen brings further understanding and a king brings you to attaining these long-term goals, as I mentioned, for the king of cups. But here you're back with some immature feeling energy. And the Page of Swords can be a very undercutting card. He's the kind of guy that when he walks into a party, everybody goes, oh no, he's here again. Because he uses words against people. He, he's a spy master. He listens to what people are saying and then passes it along as gossip. And it can be very hurting gossip. But now the Knight of Pentacles is saying, slow down. The Knight of Pentacles is just, he just trots along and acquires things as he goes. And he slowly acquires wealth, health, well-being. And down on the bottom right for the throat for communicating and teaching, you receive Temperance and the Two of Wands. Now Temperance is saying, whoa. Put a halt on this Page of Swords thing. Slow down. Use the Knight of Pentacles idea of just acquiring things slowly and being very mellow. And the Two of Wands is making plans. You've made some plans. And up there on the top for the solar plexus, you found the Three of Wands. But it's kind of telling you to rethink some of these plans and kind of get this Page of Swords energy out of the picture. And up above for your third eye for seeing and envisioning, you see the Four of Cups and the Four of Wands. Two Four cards. The Four of Cups is a contemplative card like the Hanged Man is. 
All of a sudden you're saying, well, wait a minute now. The Knight of Pentacles says, maybe I should slow down a little bit. And I got the temperance card that's saying, yeah, I should temper my behavior, my decisions. And I got the card about planning again instead of going forward. So maybe I should rethink some things. And now you have the clarification card of the Four of Wands, and you've got the Two, Three, and Four. But the Four of Wands is saying, yeah. This is another celebration card is saying, yeah, you've made some success. This is like a rites of passage card for some type of accomplishment, graduation, anniversaries, weddings. And maybe you are being honored for your accomplishments. Now up above for the crown for knowing and understanding, you received the King of Pentacles. Here's another king, a person that's going to assist you in acquiring your long-term goals, and he's offering a pentacle. This is earth, health, wealth. But here I think it's more health and well-being because the clarification card is the Ten of Cups, the card with the rainbow of cups so you can Glimpse a little bit of heaven over the rainbow. It's a card about happiness and contentment. And typically, happiness in your family and home. And here you receive the lover's card over the solar plexus for deepening your emotional bonds and having more harmonious relationships. How wonderful. Now we've discussed the past and some of the restraints involved in it. Let's skip over to the future. You receive the King of Cups again and the Ace of Swords. So now you receive the King of Cups in your spiritual awareness. And it's telling you that you had a spiritual awakening. Whatever happened with the lack of emotional control with the Page of Swords is now history. You're in the future, you're going to be, be commanding your emotions and the relationships with other people. Now, the Ace of Swords is indicating that it's been a long and hard journey to get where you're at for a new beginning. Because the King of Cups over on your unconscious side was conjoined with the World card. And here in your future now, the King of Cups is conjoined with the Ace of Swords a new sword reality beginning. This page brings thoughts, ideas, and opinions, as well as news and messages. He's been bestowed with mental acuity, and I consider him the brainiac of the sword suit. But you know, he has a really immature attitude towards things, and he doesn't have any emotional control, and he has very little experience. He's the kind of guy that just says jaw-dropping things that's very insulting to people. It might be a virtue to be honest, but you just can't have candor like that. He wants you to reevaluate your goals to make sure that they're realistic. But then again, he'd prefer to ask forgiveness before he would go ahead and just ask permission to do something. As with all of the sword suits, though, there's two edges to a sword. And the negative side of this is that there can be some acts of deception. And he's kind of a spy master kind of guy that runs around and tries to get information on people, dirt on people, so he can start rumors and gossip. That can be very injuring and harmful to other people. And at times he lacks diplomacy. He really isn't the kind of guy that you want as a neighbor or a co-worker. You know, when he walks into a party and as usual, uninvited, everybody goes, oh no. Now, the emperor is completely opposite to that. He's the mature man or the patriarch of the family that organizes things and puts things into structure, makes sure everybody has responsibilities. 
and then sets rules and regulations for boundaries. So everybody knows what's going on, and they're on the same page. You know, the Page of Swords and the Emperor is kind of like the satire of the devil and the angel on your shoulders, and the Page of Swords is saying, just go for it, the hell with everybody else, and the Emperor's going, no, you have to make some considerations. Now, the Emperor has emotional control, and the Page of Swords is just learning how to deal with emotional control. Now, so it's up to you and your free will which persona you would like to take, the Page of Swords or the Emperor. And it seems like this week maybe you're vacillating in between both of them. You know, you can be this immature child one minute and be this really mature man or woman the next. Whatever you decide this week, you're going to be moving from more turbulent waters to more tranquil waters. Because you received the Six of Swords. So hopefully you're moving from the Page of Swords persona to the Emperor's posture. Whatever it is, the Six of Swords is telling you it's time to plot a new course of action. And think about where you've been and what you're doing now and where you want to go in the future. And this card is here to help you with a seamless transition of change. And since this card is about movement, it can be maybe you traveling, going on vacation, going on an adventure or journey. But this doesn't have to be a physical journey. It can be a journey of the mind, too, and you're thinking in mental acuity. Because the swords does mean mind, and it means mind over matter. And really, you have to decide what matters to you in your life. Now, I rolled the dice and you received Capricorn, the moon, in the 11th house. Now, with the moon in the 11th house, it makes me think of the Beatles song, Need a Little Help from Your Friends. Because that kind of sums up your emotional fulfillment that comes from this week. It's from friends and family and their support. You know, you figure that there must be an easier and better way of doing business. That's why you've got the Six of Swords there because you want to move on. And you're seeking out these new ways with the Emperor by your side. You know, and you figure, well, realistically, you can't do all this alone. So you're going to take the me attitude and Add we into the party because of the 11th house. It's a house of networking and other people. Your inquiring mind wants to know about many things this week, and you feel the need for opinions and feedback from others because you're really not too sure what to think. And I can see that when you're straggling the line between the Emperor and the Page of Swords. You're not sure what to think. However, even though you canvass and ask people for their opinions, sometimes you just don't agree with their opinion, and then you become really mouthy with them like the wily Page of Swords. And you become insulting. So then, you know, the teamwork goes back from we to me. You know, by the end of the week, you might not feel like you've completely resolved all the issues that you canvassed. But that's no big deal. You know, I mean, the, you know, next week's another week. Now, you keep changing your moods this week, and they're off the map for some reason. And I think that's because of the presence of the swords, the page of swords. This is causing instability in relationships. And your feelings are like waxing and waning of the moon's phases. And the Six of Swords is telling you to move on from these turbulent mood changes to more tranquil, stable, emotional moods. You know, to you this week, strength is found in numbers with open-minded humanitarian thinking. 
That comes from the 11th house. Now on the 29th, Mars opposes Saturn. It kind of puts a screeching halt on your ambitions. You're going to have to wait till things clear a little bit. And that'll be on the 31st when Mars sextiles Uranus. And it brings kind of the ingenious you out. And it puts together more nebulous and scattered thoughts so that no longer you have these kind of roadblocks going on. Then the remainder of the week is really about family and friends and strengthening bonds with them. But just speak gentle words and drop some of the emotional intensity that you had earlier in the week. 